Hi, this is Entropy, and this will be a brief overview of some of the new features that will appear in the next version of Newton. The original version of Newton was created as sort of a feasibility study, since I don't have any formal training in coding, uh, and 3D coding in particular. I created that version as a way to teach myself how to do it, and once it got to the point where I thought it was useful, I went ahead and released it and then used what I learned uh, and incorporated that into the second version, which is what you see here. I had originally envisioned Newton to be a tool that would allow you to create an entire track, more or less, from start to finish without having to switch back and forth between several different programs. And I think the second version comes much closer to that, that goal, although I'm not going to claim that you'll be able to use it to create any sort of track imaginable. But overall, it's a, it's a ground-up rewrite of the first version. It has a brand new physics engine, which is uh, more accurate and even a little bit faster than the original one. Uh, it also has, obviously, uh, a brand new interface. Although I think that if you've used the first version, uh, you should feel pretty much at home. The overall layout is the same or similar, as is the workflow. All right, so now let's look at some of the display options. You can show and hide the shadows as well as the heartline fins, which are carried over from the previous version. Uh, something new is you can show the, the force acting along the, the track. So let me en enable this. And you'll see nothing too exciting is happening because uh, the, the normal force is just a constant 1G along the, the length of this section. But as we change the normal force, you'll see the, the fins are resized uh, according to the value of the force at that point. And this works with both the normal as well as lateral forces, as you can see. Um, you can also show the radius at that point along the track. So again, by increasing the, the normal force, you'll see the radius change. Um, uh, one helpful thing that you can now show is the position at the beginning and end of the section that you're working on. And this, uh, together with uh, the, the yaw value, uh, makes it quite a bit easier to line up the last section with the first section of, of the track to create the final uh, break run. Another thing that's new is uh, top, front, and side views. So if we turn this on, you can zoom in and out. And of course, all of these uh, are live. And this might be helpful uh, when you're editing an element. The biggest addition to Newton 2 is the choice between four different kinds of section types. And we'll look at each of these in turn. The first is the single zone force. And what I mean by single zone is that each of the three kinds of transitions uh, share a single time zone. And this was the only option you had in the first version of Newton. Um, one of my favorite features, new features, is the time warping transition. And let me demonstrate that now by creating a role. And time warping allows us to modify the shape of the transition. So we can adjust the steepness of the transition. We can make it uh, you know, rather gradual or make it uh, very abrupt. Um, as you can see, and or anything in between. And we can also adjust the center of the transition, like this. And you can work with multiple shapes as well. And this ability allows you to mimic uh, many of the elements or kinds of elements that would otherwise require multiple or separate time zones. Uh, but, but with working inside the framework, the simple framework of a single time zone, it doesn't eliminate the need of, of separate time zones, but it does uh, simplify um, creating the creation of certain elements. Probably the most anticipated new feature is the ability to use multiple and separate time zones. And if you're familiar with uh, force vector design, then you should know of the concept. And I tried to make the, the process as simple as possible by introducing a graphical timeline of the zone structure, which is what you see right here. So each kind of zone has its own timeline, and you can add um, zones uh, to each one separately. So we can have multiple uh, normal zones in this case. And as we adjust the length of the zone, you'll see that uh, the length in the timeline uh, reflects the actual length in seconds of the zone. 
And of course, we can adjust each of these separately by by clicking on them. Um, so hopefully, this will um, aid in the, in the design of, of sections that have multiple uh, separate time zones in them. And another nice feature that Newton has is the ability to to lock uh, timelines that you don't really care to work with. So, for example, if you're working on a, a modern steel coaster, which usually has no sort of lateral lateral transitions, you can lock this timeline here, right here, and you'll see that the length will automatically be adjusted to be the shorter of the two unlocked timelines. Uh, and so if we go back and adjust the, the length of uh, the roll zone, you'll see that since the lateral zone is locked, it, it will uh, update itself to be the same length as the roll in this case. And as we increase the length of the roll so that it's longer than the normal timeline, you'll again see that uh, the lateral zone will stop at uh, the end of the normal timeline because, again, that's the shorter of the two uh, timelines in this particular case. So that makes it handy, uh, again, when you're working with certain types of uh, elements. So moving right along to straight geometry types. Uh, as its name implies, uh, this allows you to create straight sections for um, uh, brake runs or lift hills or, or stations. Um, but it does more than that. If you want to create an entire track from start to finish, we need some ability to tell Newton what happens when the coaster goes through a brake run, for instance, or goes up a lift hill. Uh, namely, we need to tell it what the speed is at the exit of that section. So if you have a mid-course brake run where you slow the, the train down, you need to tell Newton what that speed is at the exit of that element of that section so that as you continue on through the rest of your track, then it will have the correct velocity. So that's the additional thing that straight geometry types allow you to do. So of course you can adjust the length in meters uh, and also any roll values that you, that you have. Uh, but this is where you set the speed at the exit of, of the section. Um, and you can allow Newton to calculate that speed automatically, but that's assuming there's no braking or, or lift hill or chain that's uh, uh, affecting the, the velocity in, in any other way. Um, so that's all there is to uh, straight geometries. And so uh, curved geometries work in a very similar manner. So the main purpose for curved geometries is for turns into and out of the station, as well as beginning and end of lift hills. Those are the main uses for it. Uh, so let me switch to this type and then reposition the camera so we can get a, a better view of uh, what options we have. So that looks uh, pretty good right there. So the top slider adjusts the the angle, total angle subtended by the section and you can adjust the uh, lead in amounts, lead in angles, lead, lead out angles as well as their transitions which is quite nice. And you can adjust the radius of the curve as well as the direction that it points in. Uh, so you can uh, create pull-ups or, or tops of lift hills, for example. And so that pretty much covers most of the major new features of Newton 2. There's still uh, quite a few things I haven't covered, such as the new options in the save element uh, panel, as well as a sort of a coaster calculator panel right here that allows you to convert between units. And uh, this is a curve analysis tool um, but hopefully this should give, give you a good idea of what to expect, and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the first look.